Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time we arrived at the beautiful city of Pioi in search of Clockwork's tail feathers. We found out that a local nightclub owner by the name of Dimitri has been using the tail feathers as counterfeit printing plates. So, our job, should we choose to accept it, which to get Clockwork's tail feathers we have no choice but to accept it, is to, well, steal the tail feathers from Dimitri and put an end to this counterfeiting operation. So for now, uh, before we start anything, I want to go back onto the internet and get myself some smoke bombs, and, uh, hmm. Technically, we, uh, we'll get the money for Murray's stuff pretty soon, so for now, I'm going to get the trigger bomb for Bentley. We're not going to be using Bentley for a good while still, but eh, it's always good to have Bentley around. Eh, it's always better to be prepared than to be, well, ill-prepared. But for now, we got two jobs for Sly. Uh, we got Bug Dimitri's Office, uh, which is the level that does contain the safe that we need to get all the clue bottles for. And over here, we got Follow Dimitri, uh, which will lead us to a Murray mission. Uh, I say we go and do this. That'll give me some time to maybe get the clue bottles and such. Plus, we'll, we'll get stuff done, and it's actually a lot safer to do that actually no I probably shouldn't be playing uh, the Murray mission first because if I want to get the treasure associated with uh, bug Dimitri's office I actually do have to do that first I believe so you know what we're gonna be doing um, I think we're gonna start off this just by going around and collecting all the missing clue bottles that we still need to get and then we'll finish the Murray mission off last because eh, I guess it's kind of fitting to end it off with Murray instead so, let's start it off by going over here, grab ourselves a clue bottle off this boat, and I will see you around trying to grab all the other clue bottles around town. Okay, well, with all that done, uh, we got all the bottles, still no idea where the vault is, but for now, we'll be getting to that vault pretty soon. So let's just hop down here, and let's get ourselves some treasure. Why? I managed to outfit this forged painting with a bug. I need you to sneak into Dimitri's office and swap it with the original. Nice. So, we'll be able to listen in on his conversations. Yes, I thought things might go more smoothly with an ear on the inside. Just be careful with the fine art. Take any damage and the painting's ruined. 
All right, so this is basically a don't get caught or don't get hit uh, type mission. And this introduces a new piece of uh, mechanic for the uh, game. I'm talking, of course, about the fact that uh, treasure that we can carry around. Throughout the levels, aside from this one, which actually has four pieces of treasure counting the painting that we're going to be swapping this with, there are three treasures hidden throughout each of the levels, and they're not a requirement for anything, they just give you a boatload of money. So it's best to try and go for all the treasures. Some of the treasures moving into the next episode will have a, a pretty uh, annoying mechanic that's associated with it, but we'll get to that when we get there. For now, let's just open up this window, hop in, and make our way to Dimitri's office. All right. Pretty, pretty uh, bog standard location. That door is locked from the inside. That's all right. I never was one for the direct approach. Swell, because the indirect approach is way up there through that air vent. So this location actually has really unique enemies inside it. These like rap janitor guys. This is the only location they ever show up in the entire game. Granted, they don't. The rat enemies don't actually show up for any of the other levels, but still, these are. They could have just stand, uh, stuck like ge generic like uh, rat enforcers in here, but they actually decided to put like a unique enemy type in here. We gotta worry about these guys. They actually will attack you if they see you, so you need to be super careful. I think they fight the same way as the rats, although they do have like a, a, a brush and attack they use against you. But they're pretty easy to avoid. Uh, what it could be a bit of a trouble to avoid are the lasers down here. However, you just stick to the tables and the piano, you should be good. This really seems like a really dumb thing to put a laser defense system on a dance floor. Like, what are you trying to protect? It's just, are you just trying to protect the alcohol behind the bar? Maybe. Well, Dimitri always was a man of vision. It's a good thing he, no one is inside this office, or else this would be very unfortunate right about now. Well, let's just swap this pain out for the bugged one. Now, here's the thing with, with this treasure right here. If you get caught with any of the other treasures in the game, they'll go back onto the pedestals you find them on. However, if you get caught and take any damage while carrying this painting treasure back to the safe house, it's gone for good. This is like the only treasure that you can permanently lose. You can't come back to Dimitri's office and just grab another one from the pedestal right here, which also one thing to note, uh, Bentley, do you really think it was a smart idea to put a bug painting of Sly, uh, inside Dimitri's office? Isn't he gonna find it a little weird that the painting looks absolutely nothing like the one that we are stealing from him? At least maybe put, like, a, a bad p picture of Dimitri to massage his ego. And in hopes of not rousing any more suspicion, I'm gonna cause a little bit of property damage inside Dimitri's office. I'm sure this won't come back to bite me. But one thing I do know that won't come back to bite me is the safe. Wow, what a bog standard code. Alright. All saves in this game, aside from one, will always have a unique ability associated with Sly. There's only one that actually does share something with Sly and Bentley, however, we're not going to be getting to that for a good while into the game. But for now, I'm going to keep the knockout dive move right there. I'm always going to, here's how I'm going to be having it. I'm always going to have the smoke bomb on me because it's a really invaluable getaway tool. 
I will always have any safe uh, moves onto the R2 button because it's just one of the op uh, one-off things. So it, the safe ones always get the unique button push. And any other moves that we are going to be getting because this game doesn't give you an overloading amount of moves. It does actually uh, space them out pretty well. So any other moves that we get, I'm going to be replacing it with the L2 button. That way all moves will get their time in the limelight and also just a chance for me to show them off. However, if there's like a move that I technically need to have for a specific mission, because there are some missions that require you need to have this one specific gadget associated with it, then uh, yeah, I'm going to have to replace it for the moment. If you get caught, you can run away by holding down the R1 button. But if the flashlight guards uh, catch me, that means I'm already caught and I've already lost my treasure. Especially with the case of how trigger happy that flashlight guards are, I am not going to get away from them and loot and get away with this painting if any of them see me. Thankfully, aside from having to deal with the rats inside the nightclub location, get back to the safe house is pretty easy so long as you don't accidentally slip off the top of the rooftops. Just make your way back over here. And we will have made ourselves a pretty penny off this treasure. Now, I'm going to sell this treasure right now. Just to show off uh, the money that you get from it. You get 232 coins off this gold painting, which is a pretty decent amount. It almost gives us enough to get Murray's gadget on top of that. Yeah, we only have 350 now. However, for the other treasures, I feel like just to, to hammer it in how much money you get off them, I'm going to hold them all off till we get to... Until we get all the treasures in the level, and then I'll sell them all in one big go. Just so you can see how much money you can make off these things. And you will have so much money left over by the next level that you might not even need to do a little bit of grinding off enemies or off uh, the treasures in that level to begin with to even get the gadgets for them. I think not until like the very end of the game is it that you will be able to get the treasure, or you'll have to do a little bit of grinding off enemies to get their... Uh, get their treasure and then be able to buy the gadgets from them because I think the gadgets go up to 800 to a thousand by the end of the game he's ordered his guards to ring the boat's bell when the coast is clear coast is clear for what of that I'm uncertain ring the bell and follow him without being seen then maybe we'll find out what he's hiding all right seems simple enough Dimitri, no club below. And also professional lounge lizard. Ooh, that was a really bad location for that flashlight guard to come in. Thank God that there's an awning right there. Alright, now it's just best to just follow Dimitri on the on the rooftops. There's no way to uh, for him to see you. He has no uh, peripheral vision above his li line of sight, so as long as you stay up here, you'll be perfectly good. I don't even think there's any, like, rooftop guards patrolling up here to really get in your way. You do need to be super careful, though, because Dimitri will periodically turn around to see if someone's behind him, if you are insane enough to try and follow him on the ground. Just be super careful that the flashlight guards do not see you because they are in mass down on the on the roadways. Also, the closer you get to Dimitri, the louder his theme plays, and Dimitri's theme is like one of the best things about this series. Dimitri is such a lovable character, even though he's really uh, the bad guy at this level, he he's still like a really quotable character, and the people really do love him, and any fans of the series just love love him to death. Me included, he's a great character. That could have been bad. I doubt he would have seen me, but still, that could have been bad. Bentley, I don't think this is the time nor the place to go down for a closer view, especially since he just turned around as you said that. But I will go down for a closer view right over here. 
That's me trying to remember the password to any of my things. Just me uh, constantly cursing myself, trying to figure out what it was. That the job is done. So now, uh, as you can see, Sly can't actually do this job. If we try to go over to the icon right over here. We actually have to go back and swap to Murray. And actually, now that we've done this, Murray is now a playable character. I will go over how Murray plays compared to Sly as soon as we get out with him, just because it's really noticeable. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get his move by this mission. However, we should be able to get his move by the next time we have to use him. All right, so let's swap over to Murray. And as plain as Murray, as you can see, we can not, unfortunately, jump and press the circle button to climb up. Murray is way too big and heavy to do any of the acrobatics that Sly can. He can jump and use the awnings as springboards, and that's good. He can also do the, the tiptoe thing. I actually do like how he does it. I like that he does it so fast that the music for it actually speeds up. He's not as fast as Sly. He he is a pretty decently fast character, but he's nowhere near as fast as Sly is. He can't jump as high as Sly can. However, he packs twice the amount of uh, punches that Sly does. Here, we'll take it out on this card right here. One punch, and he's already knocked out. Whereas Sly, it takes like three to four hits with his cane to put guards into a knockout state. Or I guess in this case, a stun state. I, I go for them being knocked out when you actually defeat the guards. So yeah, it only takes like one one hit from Murray to do that, whereas it would take like four to five hits. Or three to four hits, I should say. Murray, I need you to make your way back to the Aqua Pump room and sabotage it. Jeez, I don't know. How am I supposed to get past these lasers? You should be able to break that power box by throwing something at it. Press the circle button to use your stomp move near the ice machine to pick up a block of ice. Then press the square button to throw the block at the power box. Hit the circle button to pick stuff up and the square button to throw. Got it. You know one thing that you just now noticed through that cutscene? Bentley's glasses, like the, the bars to hold them onto your head, aren't actually connected to his glasses. They're connected to his eyebrows. Also, why are Bentley's eyebrows a camouflage? That always just seemed weird to me, even as a kid playing this game. Right, for now, let's just pick that up and throw it. One thing I do like, I know for a fact this is just for the player's expense, so they know what they need to do to use the character's move sets, but I find it funny that Bentley has to remind Murray how to do the, his stop move to throw things when he just did that during the museum heist. Now that is actually an organic way to tell that, hey, you can pick up more than just blocks of ice with Murray. You can basically pick up any small object with Murray. Uh, this chair right here, pick it up. Or I guess this barrel in this case, pick it up, you can throw it. This chair, pick it up, you can throw it. This box, pick it up, you can throw it. Uh, this bottle of alcohol right here, you cannot pick it up and throw it, but you can punch it. And we'll take this box right here. Up up here. Stomp. Stop, Murray, please. Thank you. And toss him into a fiery death. Yeah, playing through this series again, uh, through this year on the, on the Twitch channel, I realized just how morbid this game is in some of the guard takedowns. Like, you can incinerate them, you can crush them, you can chop them to pieces, you can electrocute them to death. It's actually pretty morbid, and I had rose-colored glasses, or I guess rose-tinted glasses as a kid playing this game, because I never found a problem with it, but now looking back at it, just, jeez, they really got away a lot with this game. Doing 
some more property damage. Let's head up here. Avoid the lasers, unlike that poor guard right there. And we finally made it to the end of the level. Alright, gotta draw on these guards, these poor guards. I kind of feel bad for them. They're just trying to do their job, and they end up dying a really horrific death. Now, there's one thing that this game doesn't actually teach you, is the fact that Murray can insta-grab guards from uh, a punch state. Not like that. What you want to do is you want to hit the triangle button instead, and then hit the circle button. Murray will knock him into the air, and then uh, grab him out of the air. It's actually a really good thing, to, especially if you want to fight against uh, smaller guards and they just keep coming and you might see a flashlight guard coming after you. It's really useful to do that just to even out the playing field a bit. Alright. Nope, I was going to say that we only need one more guard after that one, but nope, that was enough guards. All right, and with that, we are done with Murray, and we are done with this section of the preparation for the heist. Let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, fellas, I've constructed a plan to get at the clockwork tail feathers, but we'll need to pull off a few more jobs to set things up for the heist. First, Sly will have to pick a few pockets in the theater so that we'll have access to the Spotlight Control Center. Once that's accomplished, We'll be able to turn off all the security around the printing press. We'll need your muscle, Murray, to take out all the exterior alarm horns. We don't want anything to alert the guards while we pull off the big job. And finally, we'll need to get into the discotheque to drop this mirror ball. Trust me, it's all part of the plan. 